Hey guys, welcome to my uh, Facebook Live market update on absorption rate. Currently in the uh, for the after the third quarter report, right? So we're in October of 2017, and uh, just updating the market on as I mentioned, in, if some of you saw the uh, the um, uh, Prime video that I emailed out. Uh, talking about the segments of the market where the market's moving the fastest. And so before I get started, I just want to take you through a quick principle, like a little bit about the methodology of uh, how we calculate absorption and why it's important. So, um, here on the screen, as we can see, so absorption rate. Basically, we're talking about the current monthly supply of homes, how many months it will take to sell all of the active listings in a given market. We calculate this by dividing the number of total listings that are on the market by the average number of closings that took place over the immediate prior six months, right? And then as we can see in this bar graph here, historically, the um, uh, an absorption rates or a uh, month supply of inventory between six and seven months indicates a, buyer, a balanced market, right? Where prices will have a tendency to stay relatively stable. When we move below six months worth of inventory, we have a market that tends to be a little bit more competitive. Right, a little bit more of a seller's market where prices have a tendency to appreciate. And then when we move into a market where there's higher inventory, meaning over seven, eight, nine months supply, we have a market that tends to favor buyers uh, in terms of, uh, of leverage and uh, an ability to negotiate. And we also have a historic tendency uh, to see prices actually move a little bit backwards. So before we move in there, the important components um, that we're looking at as we move through the fourth quarter of 2017 and ultimately into the uh, into 2018 is just realistically like where's the market going? So when we look at just supporting this you know this premise, I want to bring up another screen here, um, which I shared with uh, if you saw the market report that we did uh, immediately following the end of, uh, of the third quarter, so a couple weeks ago. We can see what's happening in, in the market now. So this is the third quarter market report for all of the towns um, in Atlanta County. And we can see as we scroll through, we look at the number of listings that, I'm sorry, the number of sales that took place in the third quarter in virtually every town in the offshore markets is up, right? You also look at what happened to median sales price in virtually every town um, in terms of median, prices are up uh, year over year for the third quarter. So that's exciting. We saw a little bit of variation in some of the island communities, but generally speaking, when you look at pricing and you look at the number of sales, the islands kind of followed suit as well. So exciting things that are happening in, in the overall South Jersey markets uh, as we move, you know, as we move into the fourth quarter. To get back to the absorption rate, uh, absorption report, right? So we look here at the fourth quarter. Um, so when we look at these numbers here, we're talking about the number of total listings that were taken in the in the third quarter, right? So basic economic principle, again, be reminded of, we've got more sales that took place year over year. Now we're seeing the trend, generally speaking, for the third quarter has been that the number of listings that came onto the market, with, the, with few exceptions, has generally been lower than they were year over year. So then as we move forward and we look at the actual absorption rates, we can see where these numbers are. Now, what I want to do is just before I get too deep into that detail, I want to zoom out a little bit and show because what I did on this chart back here is I broke down where absorption rates were back in April, so six months ago versus where they are today. So we've got each town in Atlanta County right here. So we've got Linwood, Northfield, Summers Point, Seekin, Egerba City, Egerba Township, Galloway, Hamilton, Malka, of course, all the island communities, Ventnor, Margate, Atlantic City proper, right, Brigantine, Ocean City. And so we've got in red here under April, we've got where the absorption rate was in the in April of 2017, so exactly six months ago. And we can see where the numbers are. And if we think about where they were relative to that chart that we showed you, the bar graph, right? Some of the numbers were relatively, a couple of the towns indicated a balanced market, but a lot of the towns indicated that the market was still a little, little bit leaning in the direction of a buyer's market. Right now we're six months later, and so it's just interesting to see how much the market shifted in these last six months. Look at where all the mark, all the numbers are today, currently. Right, they're all indicating that they're leaning more in the direction of a balance than in some cases. Right, look at Summers Point, look at Agarver Township, Galloway Township. They're even leaning in a direction of being more of a seller's market, where we have expectation that as we move into 2018, we're going to see prices continue to rise just a little bit. 
not too far off with the island communities. Some of the numbers are a little bit higher, but they're definitely a, a much more uh, active and competitive market when you're a seller in those markets today versus where they were uh, six months ago. So just a really interesting uh, indication as to what's happening. I'm going to dive down over the course of the next week to 10 days into each one of these towns individually and break down right where the prices are moving most competitively in which segments, et cetera, um, in each town. And also break down the difference between residential. So these are all uh, our methodology with these reports are everything that's a one family residential dwelling, meaning single family home or condominium. We're not including land, we're not including multifamily, we're not including commercial, just one family residential dwellings. So as I break down the in-depth town reports for Linwood, for instance, or Egg Harbor Township or Ventnor, right, we're going to break down residential single family separate from condominiums because they're definitely two distinctly different markets. And then we're also going to separate out, separate out uh, the distressed sales from the non-distressed sales. Again, completely different segments, completely different levels of of activity in each of those areas. Now, as we scroll down here, and we're looking again at the absorption rates, much lower than they were six months ago, right? Same things in uh, in the island communities. What I did is I've been talking for a while about how segmented this market is from a price standpoint, because they really, really are two distinctly or three distinctly different markets. And so to dive deeper into that, it requires certainly a bit of work uh, in terms of identifying, like, where median sales price is, how many sales are occurring below median, how many sales are occurring in what we identify as a trade-up home market, and then how many sales are occurring in what we would describe as more of a premium market. So when we're looking at this market, so we see, right, median, below median, we're identifying as starter homes. Above median, up to two times median, I'm identifying as trade-up homes, and then two plus times median, I'm identifying as what I would describe as premium or even luxury markets, right? So then as we scroll down and we look at these towns and we look at how that segmentation applies to the specific town that we're in, we can see how vastly different the market is from segment to segment. We have extremely competitive markets. Look at the month supply below median in Linwood, Northfield, Summers Point, 2.9 month supply, right? Extremely fast moving markets in, a, in virtually every single town in the offshore communities, very, very competitive also in all the towns in the island communities, right? Everything leaning in a direction of a seller's market. As we move it up into the trade-up uh, home segmentation, so again, this is median to median times two. We can see that the market has moved into a little bit more of a balanced direction. But again, we're way down from where we were six months ago. So I look at what's happened over the course of the last 90 days is really being a reflection of a return to the move up buyers, right? So when I speak with sellers, I talk a lot about what's happened over the course of the last 10 years and how we've moved in the direction of, uh, obviously we had enormous demand and not a lot of supply, ultimately created a scenario where we had enormous, like the supply outpaced the demand when the market essentially turned off, right, in, in 07, 08. Um, and then we had a very flat downward trending market for the next seven, eight years. And it took a while for the market to gain back in some momentum. One of the concerns or one of the big problems was with the trade up uh, segment of the market is that, especially in our area in New Jersey, we still had about 25, 30% of all of the sales were distressed, right? So that means 25 to 30% of the time that normal natural upward movement of someone selling a starter home to move into a trade up home, they weren't present because it was either a bank or someone coming out of a distressed situation that, that created the inability to make that trade up move. Now, all of a sudden in these last three months, we've started to see a return to that market, largely for two reasons. A lot of the distressed in inventory is, is absorbing and absorbing quickly. And make no mistake, there's still a lot to happen. There's still a lot more foreclosures that are going to come through the pipeline over the course of the next 12, 18, 24 months. But the good news is, is they're absorbing at a clip just as fast as they're hitting the market, right? So number two is only 25%, 30% of the market is actually distressed, which means there's a lot of people that were in trade-up positions that sat on the sidelines for the last eight years because they basically didn't, they either made a choice that it wasn't the right timing for them or that perhaps they were in not necessarily in an equity position to be able to pull it off. Well, so two things happened over the course of the last 
eight years. Number one, eight years worth of principal reduction. Somebody that was not in distress, not in default, paid their mortgage every month, month after month, reducing principal, amortizing their loan. So their loan balance has declined. At the same time, values have stabilized. And as I said earlier, a few minutes ago, we're actually starting to see the first upward trending uh, market in terms of premium, in terms of median sales price. And we've seen that now for two consecutive quarters. So we have prices starting to recover just a little bit. So an intersection occurs. Before we had hemorrhaging values and loan balances that were at 2009 levels, now loans have been paid down eight years later, right? So principal has been reduced and now we're finally starting to see values uh, begin a little bit of a, of a, of a um, uh, very conservative appreciation, a healthy appreciation. And so that intersection occurs where now somebody that was not in a position to make a trade up move three years ago, five years ago, eight years ago is all of a sudden in a position to be able to make that move. So that's an exciting thing. It's a return to the market that we've been waiting for, for again, the last two, three, four years. So exciting things. Again, as we scroll down, you know, similar markets, we're seeing the islands in some cases be, have a little bit more challenge in some of the areas in the move up price points. But again, far better appreciation or I'm sorry, far better uh, absorption rates and month supply than we saw six months ago. So really great news. I hope this makes a lot of sense, right? When we're looking at what kind of decisions we make as we move forward, it's important to know and kind of be confident around the trends. Uh, that are in the marketplace at the time. And so our goal is to make sure that you have uh, the best information possible to be able to make the decision uh, and, and you know, set goals and plans for your family that are going to put you in the best position uh, moving forward. So um, I think I've covered pretty much all of the details of where absorption is moving, the price points at which we're moving the fastest. As we can see, when we move up into two times median, we still have some challenges. In my opinion, that's going to take just another probably nine to 12 months before we start to see some of those numbers move down into a more competitive uh, price point. Um, we're already starting to see uh, fewer listings come onto the market in some of those segments, and we're seeing the number of sales uptick just a little bit. So it's just going to be a matter of time uh, for us to see these numbers start to reduce, and we start to see some competitiveness in that upper end of the market as well. So again, hopefully this was helpful. Any questions that we can answer, please don't hesitate to reach out directly to myself or any, anybody that's part of the team. Uh, we do a great job of being informed and making sure we're able to give uh, great advice. And uh, I hope that these couple of minutes, um, however long it has been, I think 12, 13, right, are uh, something that you can characterize as maybe among the more valuable uh, spends of your time uh, as you invest in uh, making yourself a little bit more informed about our market here. Uh, in New Jersey. Have a super great week. Uh, happy Halloween, and I can't wait to see you soon.